In the middle of the South Pacific lies the island nation of New Zealand. The only native mammal is the bat, yet there are endless opportunities for world-class big game hunting. I'm Rob Gerstner, mountain hunter and conservationist. I hope to shed some light on the controversy surrounding big game hunting in New Zealand as I pursue a mature bull tar in the Southern Alps with local guide Colin Rayner. He's in a pretty good spot to yeah. make an approach. Yeah, come right up over top of him. Yeah. We're two days into a hunt that has been plagued with disappointment. Shot right over him. Unwilling to give up, I keep climbing with optimism and determination to succeed. Here he is there. He's in a perfect spot. My pursuits take me to the farthest reaches of the earth in search of some of the most challenging high mountain species. And as if the rugged terrain and unpredictable weather weren't enough, I've upped the ante with a free range, fair chase, archery only standard. And this is just the beginning, driven by a passion for wildlife conservation and a fascination with history, these hunts take me on an adventure few could ever imagine. For me, hunting isn't a sport or hobby. It's a calling to something greater, an invitation to climb higher and go farther, to venture beyond the edge of civilization. forecast calls for a storm system to cross the South Island in a couple of days, bringing with it dangerously high winds at upper elevations. The morning is eerily still, as if these mountains sense the impending squall. Catching only quick glimpses of nannies in the distance, we climb higher for a better vantage point. With no tar in sight, we continue over the ridge and make a dismal discovery. So you figure he just laid down here and just died? Yeah, the grass is still green and he's not woofy. Yeah, you're right, he would have been a lot more ripe if he'd been dead for... Yeah, well his hair hasn't slipped at all, it doesn't take long to slip, so, so he died last night this morning. Wow. Ah, it's too bad. I age him again, so the one is here. Oh, you start at the bottom. Oh, start at the bottom. One there, two, mm -hmm. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine and a half. That's the, that's the one we look for right there. Hunting plays a vital role for game management in New Zealand like nowhere else on Earth. There are no predators here except humans. And although tar are not native, they have become an integral part of the environment and economy, with international hunters bringing in over $50 million a year. Like all wild game species, proper management is critical to ensuring the health and sustainability of the tar population and the environment. Unfortunately, government efforts center on the indiscriminate eradication of what they view as an invasive species. Annihilation of tar in New Zealand would bring the species closer to global extinction as native populations in the Himalayas are in stark decline. Yet 
Yesterday's calm is replaced with increasingly powerful winds as a storm system approaches from the west. The Southern Alps force the storm to rise in altitude, causing heavy rain on the west coast. High winds and little rain are all that's left by the time the storm reaches the eastern side of the range. I must have got a wind in there. While the wind provides great cover for our noise and movement, it wreaks havoc on our ability to remain upwind. Ridgelines and summits cause heavy turbulence in the air as the wind flows over and around. These invisible eddies of swirling air make it nearly impossible to keep the tar from catching our scent. Worsening conditions from the impending storm force us to end the day early. Tomorrow's forecast looks considerably worse and compels a pause in my hunt. This is Carl Russell, a native Maori and member of the Kai Tahu tribe of the South Island. You guys want to come? We'll come in there yes. in the cold and um, just a humble little house, so come on, guys. I'm eager to learn about Carl's perspective on big game hunting in New Zealand and the efforts to manage those populations. Throughout his life, Carl has built up his tribe's knowledge of traditional Maori hunting and gathering methods. This journey began when he was just a kid growing up with 12 siblings. And so someone was always picked in a family to carry on the, oh. carry the knowledge and stuff like that. I was the one that was given the Māori side of my life. I do realise that I was the lucky one. Yeah, yeah. They passed the torch on to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my job now until I die is to share it. Yeah. Taking groups out, catching eels, diving, fishing, yeah, whatever. And then showing them how to cook it. Not the modern way, but the old way how we used to cook it. Hmm. Which is man, quite an art form in itself. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, grab a chair. Similar to you, I grew up in a family that is outdoors, you know, living uh, the land, you know, and enjoying yeah, yeah, fishing, yeah. hunting. And See, the way I was raised, my brother and I were fortunate. There was no trophy hunting back then. Yeah, yeah. No such thing. I never heard of such yeah, a thing. Yeah. It wasn't like we were in the woods going, oh, I can't shoot him, he's not enough a trophy. Everything was a trophy because it meant we're bringing something back. Yeah, yeah. And my grandfather was a firm believer in it, and I was really fortunate to grow up that way, you know, to always be respectful to the animals and the wildlife, and to never take it for granted, ever. Yeah, well, one of the things of, um, you know, I insist when I teach, I, I tell them that the cooking and eating of any species that we're catching or processing is the end result of a whole lot of other stuff. Mm. I specialize in teaching what we call the whakapapa, the history of that food, how it was created from our culture. And once you learn that, you have a greater respect for what you're actually harvesting. A good, good example is a tree. Now a tree from a Western perspective is, is a commodity. How much money can I make from that tree? From a Māori perspective, when you looked at a rākau, a tree, it's a living thing. Mm. And there was a whole ritual before you actually killed it. Yeah. You know, so you use the word killed it, not cut it down, we killed it. Yeah. Because what they actually held was a funeral for it. They farewelled it for taking its life. Then whatever they'd done with it, whether it was to build a canoe, to build sure. a house, or to carve it, or whatever. Then they had a ceremony welcoming it into the world. Hmm, that's great. Giving it back life, that yeah. sort of stuff. So like I said, there was always a ritual. Out. So everything was looked at from um, as a living species of, of, it had a value, but it had a value of survival. To me, it's almost like the beginning of wildlife management and conservation, way back in a oh, time when it, yeah, sure. when it wasn't you know, written up or sure. studied, but it's the essence of, you have to focus on handling it properly for future sustainability. And when, when Māori first came here, way, way back in the day, when they first landed here, there were no 
animals in here, like um, they brought the first animals here, which was the dog and the kiori, the rat. There were no other animals, it was just birds, lizards, plants, mm. you know, fish, eels, that. no trout, no salmon, none of that sort of stuff. It was pr what they call pristine. It was perfect. Yeah. In today's world, um, you know, you're just going to look at the devastation of um, in our bushes, you know, from a lot of the introduced species, the possums, the stoats, weasels, you know, all that sort of stuff. Pretty shocking. Yeah, really shocking. And now it's all um, economics is now destroying our country faster than uh, anyone through um, the, the type of um, industries we run in this country that just for that short gain of dollars and um, the long term gain is destruction of our environment. And, and unfortunately, we've got to get rid of that concept of the dollar. Yeah. I do not demand that Māori want this, Māori want that. What I demand is the requirement needs this health level. And if we can get the, the environment back to that health index, Māori have a win, Pākehā have a win, recreational has a win, hunters have a win, everyone has a win. Yeah. But we've got to get the environment to this level. Mm -hmm. and, and at the end of the day, regardless what Māori want, Pākehā want, farming wants, industry wants, if the environment's not healthy, bro, we, no one's getting nothing. Yeah, and the key is, as you say, respect for the for the wildlife and the environment has to be in front of money. It has to be oh. ahead of money. Otherwise, there's no way. My time here with Carl has been nothing short of fascinating. Like many indigenous cultures, Māori have a connection with nature that is anchored in respect for all things. It's a mindset many hunters share and one that shapes my all-archery pursuits. As a parting gift, Carl shares an ancient Māori karakia with me that's meant to clear the way from the mountains to the sea. E tapatū ki ute, e tapatū ki tai, e tapatū a tāri, e tapatū a takaro. E koi kaha ki ite, e koi kaha ki tai, e kaha a tāri, e kaha a takaro. Whanō, whanō, harama te tau ki haumi e uie, tai ki e. I'm optimistic that Carl's prayer and a little luck will turn the tide on my pursuit for a mature bull tar. He's a shooter. Do I reckon? Yeah, you reckon he's a shooter? I don't reckon I know. Okay. No reckoning. There'll be a reckoning. <laughs> this is the type of spot and stalk scenario that dreams are made of. The success or failure of this hunt now lies solely in my ability to remain undetected as I carefully work my way into bow range. cameraman perches himself behind a rocky outcropping as I take this opportunity to close the distance. I appear out in the open, but from my perspective, I can just barely see the tips of this bull's horns. 
thinking this hunt couldn't get any better. A second mature bull appears from out of nowhere as he stands up from his bed in the tall grass. Well camouflaged and hidden behind a large tuft of grass, this bull can't quite make out what I am. He curiously comes closer, presenting me with a perfect shot opportunity. What an amazing experience this has been. This week has been nothing short of a roller coaster ride of emotions with three Miss Tar. But now I sit here with a fully mature nine year old monster of a bull with as much respect and reverence one can have for such a majestic animal. Without a doubt, this is my favorite part of a successful harvest, eating what you kill and sharing it with friends. Now oh, my special spices. I have eight or nine spices in here. Cumin, uh, curry, mustard, oregano, cilantro, onion powder, garlic powder, basil, and pepper. Oh, and cinnamon too. Cinnamon is the key. Key. Smells good, looks good. We'll see how tough it is. I, my theory is you don't want to at, at all overcook tender leaves. Right. Got to be red, otherwise they're going to be tough. That looks perfect to me. Are we going to try one? Yeah. <laughs> Great. I think I've got it. This is, this is right here, this is the best. This is a great way to end the day, even though it's not over yet. Okay, the ceremonial crack of the whiskey. Retiring to the trophy room, I break out the whiskey and cigars for a proper yeah, celebration with Colin and the camera crew. Yeah, look at that. Hmm. yummy. 
Here you go, mate. Good on you, man. Cheers. Good day. Cheers, congratulations. Thank you. Mm. It's good. Yeah. Mm. So can we smoke in here? We probably can't. We should go outside, right? Let's I just open the door. Well, we can go outside. Okay. <laughs> These are really good ones. New Zealand is a place of contradiction where the ancient ways of the Maori meet modern industry. A place with no native mammals, yet big game thrives. Where conservation means quality trophy management to some, while to others it means returning to a bygone age. Hmm. That's damn good. Simple pleasure in life. Yeah. Only time will tell how these contradictions play out. What I know for certain is the beauty of this land is intriguing and the free range, fair chase hunting opportunities are numerous. I cannot wait to come back.